Some years before that, when I was uh, still flying around as a cabin crew, I actually did start carrying a sketchbook with me again. And I did start doing sketching around the world, uh, uh, especially during holidays. But I've never really done that in Hong Kong. In the last two years, I have uh, started focusing on what we call sunset survivors. And so these are sunset trades and industries that were very common back in the days, but now are almost on the verge of vanishing. So among these, uh, for example, I have the Mahjong Tao Carver, Birdcage Maker, and uh, more recently also the the mailbox maker. Letterboxes were something, are, I mean, they're still around, but it used to be so common. They almost became synonymous with Hong Kong, isn't it? That one. What yes, that one? yes. This one is um, made by Mr. Lai. Uh, he's in Shang Wan, a lot of people would recognize him. Sadly, the Mr. Lai is one of the very last few mailbox makers in Hong Kong, and he has already officially closed. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'm very, very glad to be able to, to be there on the very last day when the family was closing up shop. It's literally like watching, kind of like closing of a chapter in Hong Kong's story. This is uh, our kombucha brand, yeah. Um, funny story, I actually met my business partner while I was painting <laughs> on the streets. Today we are visiting our microbrewery in Kennedy Town, and this is Ash. Uh, so two of us, we make this whole on the wagon happen from scratch. Kombucha is a, itself is a fermented tea. That's exactly what kombucha is. So, um, so yes, tea is when you make tea, and of course there needs to be some raw cane sugar, that is then what ferments. So it's the elements of the tea plus the raw cane sugar. So yeah, you can't have kombucha without, uh, <laughs> without some sort of tea in there. So today we're going to show you how we make our, um, one of our signature blends today, <laughs> our jasmine. So we started off, we've got a little bit of uh, jasmine tea. We're actually just making a really small batch here today. It's five litres. Well, we're just waiting for the water to boil. And, uh, and then once it's boiled, we can obviously steep the tea. And, uh, and then we'll measure out a little bit of raw cane sugar. And uh, that's it. Simple. So, uh, so the whole process, starting basically from where we are today, this, uh, this five litres of, um, of starter can become call it 50 odd litres of kombucha in a bottle, fizzy, ready to sell in about one month. So the whole process does take some time. Uh, we've become very passionate about the fact that our product is a real kombucha. And um, the reason being is that, uh, is that on the commercial kombucha market now, we, um, there's, we are competing with a, with a lot of, um, if we may call them non-genuine kombucha products. We're bottling it here today. There's actually no carbonation in it, or extremely little. It's not a fizzy drink. Mm. Um, it's fermented tea that's flat. We're putting it in the bottle. Um, we're going to then commit that to a second fermentation. So it stays at room temperature and, uh, and does a second fermentation in the bottle. That process takes usually about three days. After three days, it's going to be very, very carbonated. And, uh, and we need to get it at the right point because it needs to go into the fridge. And once that product's in the fridge, it has to stay, relatively speaking, it has to stay in the fridge or at least stay refrigerated. Because if it's not in the fridge, it's going to keep fermenting pretty rapidly. Ultimately, what will happen is it becomes way over carbonated. You open this, you'll have kombucha hit the roof, uh, or <laughs> you could explode a bottle. So that process called bottle conditioning is a champagne maker's term, actually where the carbonation is natural. The main point to make here is that so often you'll go to the supermarket, you see kombuchas that are sitting on the shelf. Now, they've clearly, at the very least, they've been pasteurized. More often than not, they're made um, these days from a concentrate. Most of them are, are made from a, a concentrate that's topped up with water, force carbonated, and, and marketed as a kombucha. So we launched our business with the bottle return program in place. Um, at that stage, 
it was probably more about just preserving bottles and, um, and you know, making the most we could out of our smallish number of bottles we had. But what we hadn't perhaps fully predicted at that time was how important it would come and to the point now where it's actually right at the centre of our business. It's a, it's a great program. Retail customers love it, our wholesale partners love it, and, uh, and everyone's very supportive, actually, and I think it's the, uh, it's the way forward. We think it's, um, that it's very much the, the future and will become an expectation of, uh, of businesses to, um, to uh, do these sorts of things in the future. So. There was a, a new generation of kombucha makers us being one of them. It all comes down to us, comes out to all our, all our artisan makers who are passionate in introducing a quality product. There is a growing coverage and a growing interest, so it will take time, uh, but I do believe kombucha is here to stay.